Well, Health Products Regulator Sapra has introduced another mechanism to facilitate reviews of COVID-19 vaccine applications. And up to now, the regulator has approved the AstraZeneca, Pfizer, as well as the J&J vaccines. It's now also received application for CoronaVac as well as Sputnik V. But to talk to us about the process for the evaluation of a vaccine, Sapra CEO Dr. Buitumelo Simeta Makokotlela joins us now to give us some clarity. And Doc, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time and giving us this clarity to us and South Africans. Um, I want to start with this before we get into, you know, the other mechanisms that you are currently, uh, you know, facilitating and in the process of. I mean, we understand that obviously you are mandated, um, you know, rather according to legislation to, of course, to ensure the safety, efficacy, as well as the uh, quality of health products in South Africa. So then with that being said, what's the normal evaluation process that SAPRA has to conduct uh, upon you know, receiving or an application uh, of a vaccine or a product, a health product in the country? Thank you very much for having me. And indeed, among the three elements that you speak to, um, you know, the normal process is that we would receive um, information and data from the applicant that demonstrates that their product is a quality product. That means that it's manufactured under principles of good manufacturing practices. It also, um, they would provide information that shows that the product is safe um, from preclinical studies. So these are animal studies as well as clinical trials, phase one, two, and three trials. And then they would also provide data from phase two and three trials that indicate the product's efficacy. So these are volumes of data Mm. that we review. And at a time, we've got a committee of close to 20 um, individuals with expertise in all of these three areas that are reviewing um, the data that's made available. Right. So we're talking here just in the context of, you know, general health products. But if I could just then zone it into, you know, the pandemic as a context. I mean, I understand that you've also introduced another mechanism here to facilitate, uh, you know, a review of COVID-19 applications, uh, the rolling review process. Doc, elaborate further on what this is and what it means. Sure. So this is a process that we've um, introduced not only ourselves, but other regulators and other countries, wherein we say typically we want all of the set of information to be made available up front. Now, with COVID, because we understand the urgency, we understand the context of being in a pandemic, we've then said applicants can submit the information as it becomes available. Obviously, it then says we can receive an application, say now in June, but we may only have the full set of data three or four months later, Mm. which means that then we have started to review. So we don't only start reviewing when we have the full set of data, we review as we receive the data. And that's a new mechanism that we've introduced. Yeah. So we have Pfizer, we have the Johnson & Johnson vaccines, we have the AstraZeneca, but I understand that you also received applications, Doc, of CoronaVac as well as Sputnik V. What's the status on those two applications? No, that's correct. And actually, recently this week, we um, also received an application for sign of form. So we're now sitting with evaluating in these three um, vaccines. And um, the Sinovac um, application, as we've indicated, um, you know, we've had numerous engagements with the applicant. They've provided the bulk of the information that we need. And that's quite at an advanced stage. With Sputnik, it's a rolling review uh, submission, but they've also made a submission for um, section 21, which is the emergency um, access. And um, with that one, we're also engaging with them. And um, there are sets of data that they have recently provided to us. And so we will then review. Yeah. So that's the status of those two. And as I said, Sinopharm has just come in. Right. So we're doing the initial screening. That's interesting because I understand that Moderna and Sinopharm had not been submitted previously, but it seems Sinopharm now has uh, just recently. Uh, so let's take then to, uh, for example, Moderna. If no application has been sus- uh, submitted as yet, uh, in this instance, a Moderna vaccine, does it mean that then no regulatory review can then be undertaken by SAPRA? That is correct. And, you know, SAPRA as a regulator, we're supposed to be a neutral organization. So we cannot go out and solicit um, applications because then we would be accused of being biased. Mm. And so we wait until we get a an application. But industry, but the government can engage with various applicants and, you know, encourage them to submit. And so... 
until we have an application, there would not be a decision on a vaccine. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Doc, because I wanted to ask you that then for a vaccine, uh, you know, to be uh, introduced into South Africa, or at least the likelihood of a vaccine to be introduced into South Africa, what is SAPRA, you know, likely to take into account? Uh, just for clarity's sake, what, what, what is important to take into account before then you can, uh, you know, approve it for introduction in the country? Yes. So very critical, and I cannot stress this more. It's about the safety of the product. It's about its quality. And you've seen how we've handled the um, Janssen vaccine matter, because we were concerned about the quality of that. And our role as a regulator is to ensure that every product that is available, every jab that a South African receives, we are sure that it is safe. Yes, they will have side effects, etc. But it is safe. It is effective. And it is a quality product. More importantly now, with the variant of concern being the beta variant that is dominant in South Africa, we are also asking for data Mm. from the applicants that demonstrates that these vaccines are effective against these, this variant specifically. Yeah, and, and Doc, I'm glad you talk about that because it seems it's a rigorous process that has to go through, even though you do acknowledge the sense of emergency that these vaccines are needed, but it seems you have to do due diligence uh, as an organization before you can approve that. Uh, and thanks for answering that for me. But before I let you go then, how do you deal with pressure as SAPRA to make you know, public access to these vaccines at a rate which is you know, quite uh, speediated, which is quite urgent. Um, how do you respond to that pressure? Because I'm sure you see on media, you see uh, you know, conversations around the urgency of vaccines, even at the same time you have to do your job. How do you respond then to that pressure? No, thank you. And we fully un- understand the pressure. I mean, we're also equally affected by this pandemic. We understand that we are in a pandemic the vaccine rollout has been slower than anticipated. But for us as a regulator, it is important that we make our decisions only on science. Because at the end of the day, the public must have confidence in us that we've applied the due diligence, that they can trust all the health products that are in the country. So at no point can we uh, succumb to pressure. We have to keep our uh, focus on the science, and that's the only aspect really that we consider. But we understand that there's a pandemic and we have to then work with speed. It's a pleasure talking to you, Dr. We do melo simeta, Mago Kotlel, of course, the SAPRA, uh, you know, uh, talking to us there. Thank you so much uh, for your time.